Hi, this is Mark from Wiki Design. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to use the monthly website maintenance checklist. I personally use this checklist whenever I update our client websites, and then it's up to you if you want to share this with the client or just keep it for yourself. And if you haven't already purchased the checklist, I'm going to leave a link in the description below so you can purchase it from our website. So now I'm going to walk you through how I set up this checklist and how you can make changes to it. So as you can see right here, I'm just in Microsoft Excel, but I also uh, know that this is going to work in Google uh, Sheets as well. So you can use it over there if you don't have Excel. So the first thing is you're going to probably want to change out your uh, logo right here. So what you could do is just right click where it says Wiki Design, and then you could just go to Change Picture and then change it with your own image. And then of course uh, you can change this. Uh, so whatever year you're in, you can change this or just take this off completely. And then down here, you can change the business name or in your situation is probably the client. So you can go ahead and just put in the client name and then the client URL. And then the way I have this work is all of these right here. If you just put the letter X in any of these spots, you can see it automatically is going to go to the green. So that way you can visually see that it's been checked off. So you can always go ahead and just delete that. And if you aren't sure with how to change that, or if you want to change this to a different color, what you can do is go up to home right here. And then right here, it says conditional formatting, where it says manage rules. You can just go ahead and click that. And then it says this worksheet, and you can see right here X, and then this is the format right here. So you can always go ahead and just change this format to whatever color you want. And then down here is where I have the notes. And I like to have notes because sometimes you can see right here, I just gave you a few examples. So sometimes when we update our LMI websites, there might be a bug on the front end that I'm aware of. And so what I'll do is just put an X here so the client can see, hey, I have a note here for February and then I'm not gonna update Elementor right now, but I will like next month. And then here in April, WordPress just had a pretty big update. So usually when there's a big update with WordPress, I recommend waiting like a week or two just so there's any weird bugs sorted and then you can go ahead and upgrade. So in some situations, I'll just go ahead and put that in there and then update it the next month. So the very first thing I always make sure I do before I actually start updating any client websites is I make sure that I do a manual backup. So in our situation, we have our hosting company, they're doing backups automatically. I have another backup system going through every night. And then what I like to do for our clients is I will manually go ahead into uh, something like we're running cPanel, so we'll go ahead and actually export it manually. I'll download my computer and then upload it to our Dropbox. So that way, in case a client comes back in a couple months and they need a backup from, uh, I don't know, February of this year, I'll have that ready for them. So what I like to do is just go ahead and start with that one first. So before you update anything, make sure you have a backup. Now that you've backed up your website, what I like to do is these first three items right here. So I'll go ahead and make sure I update WordPress, plugins, and any themes. So I'm going to jump over into our demo website and actually show you how I do it, you know, step by step. And as you can see right here, this updates tab right here, I got five things I need to update. So I'm just going to go ahead and click that. And one thing I've learned over the years is sometimes it's best to install a plugin like this, where it's going to take a screenshot of everything. So let's say I have a website and it has a whole bunch of different plugins. If I do a screenshot like that, it's automatically going to you know, save it to my machine. So now I know what version it was on. So if for some reason I update a plugin and it you know, goes crazy, at least I know what version it is, you know, just for reference. And you can also give this to the client as well. It's just kind of like a screenshot of what you updated. But what I like to do first is go ahead and update any plugins. So I'll just go here, click update plugins. And so of course, after you do that, it's gonna automatically show that uh, all of your updates are completed. And then you can click back up here to updates. In this situation, if you're using something like Elementor, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and just make sure you click this right here. And then I always like to close up these. And then this already has the most current version of WordPress, but if you need to update WordPress, I usually do it after I update my plugins. And then it looks like my themes are correct right there. So I'll also go into the themes tab just to make sure everything is good. And then what I recommend too is if you want to remove extra bloat on your server, if you update WordPress, for example, they love to throw in their 2024 themes and you know that type of stuff, you're probably never going to use it. So if you update client websites for years, you could have like, you know, 10 different themes back here that are just completely useless. So you can go ahead and just delete any you know old themes that you're not going to be used so in most situations we just use hello elementor and this is the only thing i need to update 
So then what we can do is go back into here and then just you know put an X here, X here, and an X there. Then the next one I like to do is clear the cache and then clean up the backend database with any post revisions or anything along those lines. So with our websites, uh, we have a Lightspeed server, and so I'm using the Lightspeed caching system. So of course, this is going to vary depending on how you have your system set up, but this is a really streamlined way for me to update my client websites is just using something like the Lightspeed cache plugin. So what I like to do is go up here and just hover and just purge all. So that will purge all of the JavaScript and the CSSs and the static images, everything on the server is gonna be now wiped clean. So I like to do that. And then if you go underneath here where it says database, uh, in my situation, if I click right here where it says DB optimization settings, I have like two revisions, zero days. So I just wanted to show you that this is a really good system right here. So for client websites, a lot of times I'll do like 30 revisions up to 30 days max. Um, that way, in case the client is updating pages a lot, at least they'll give the flexibility to at least have 30 of them backed up. But what I'll go ahead and do is make sure I do, uh, I clear right here, it says post revisions. That's gonna help with your database size. Uh, you can clear any transients down here. Um, you can click this button right here if you want, is optimize the tables. Um, but I do recommend, of course, you already took a backup of everything, so in case something does go um, haywire, you can always back up you know, from the one that you did in the very first step. So that's it, that's uh, how you clear the cache and the database. So let me go ahead and just put an X back here. So now that we cleared the cache and updated everything on the back end, now what I like to do is go to the front end of the website in an incognito window and just start looking around for any bugs and then make sure that you test the contact form. So let me go ahead and do that and show you how the next steps are. And here we are on the front end of that website. So this is just a demo website. There's not much to it, but let's just say this is the contact form. What I like to do is literally go in here and do a contact form test. I do this all on the front end so the client will receive the email so you, they know that you're in here you know, making an update. And then I literally type in monthly uh, form test from Wiki Design. And then a cool little trick I learned over the years doing this is I put in the time. So as of right now, I'm recording this at 4.06 p.m. I like to put that in there so at least I have a timestamp of when I submitted this. So if there's any weird delay and the client doesn't get this for like two days or you know hours later, now you kind of know that you set this at exactly 4.06. And then go ahead and just hit send and then make sure that everything is looking good right here. Your submission was successful. Now what I like to do is go into Elementor and I highly recommend enabling this right here. Uh, underneath your contact forms, you can do submissions where it will save your submissions in here. So now we can go ahead into the test contact forms and just hit X. Um, so if the client has multiple contact forms in totally different places of the website, you might wanna go in and just test a few of them. You don't have to like test all of them, but let's say you have one on a template page uh, you might want to go ahead and just make sure that that one works as well. And then I'll just put X for check for bugs. And one thing I highly recommend is go ahead and just stay on top of any bugs that might be happening inside of your main software. So in our situation, all of our client websites are using Elementor. So I'm in this right here. This is the official like GitHub uh, issues uh, ticket system right here. So anybody that has bugs, I can see right here anything that's been going on. I know, uh, and also with the Facebook group, it's important to stay on top of these bugs because there's bugs in every piece of software. So it's best to, I, I like to just stick with one or two frameworks and just stay on top of it with the bugs and just make sure that you monitor what's going on. Uh, Cause there are cases where Elementor could be really buggy and you don't want to go ahead and update all your client websites at once. You know, that month, if there's a whole bunch of bugs, cause you might have to go in in another day or two and redo it. So. Just stay active on this because it's really part of the job. And now what we can do is make sure that the SSL certificate is valid and you're not getting any issues. So if I go into the website right here, uh, I'm inside of Chrome. So what you can do is click right next to the domain where it says view site information. And then you can go ahead and click where it says connection is secure. And then right here, it will tell you if it's valid or not the certificate. So you can go ahead and click that. And you can see I'm using Let's Encrypt uh, it, it was issued April 4th, and then it expires July 3rd. So you can even put that down in your notes if you want that, hey, the SSL is going to expire July 3rd, 
And in most situations, your server, uh, like in our example, will renew this automatically every three months. But you can go ahead and I'm gonna just show a screenshot of our cPanel. You can go ahead and see right here that this is gonna give you a list of all of your certificates at this domain and when it expires. So now you can go ahead and just put an X next to that and then if for some reason the client is still paying for SSL somewhere, make sure you, you know, document those dates. And then if it expires, let them know for sure. And the next one is go ahead and just make sure that your WordFence scans are looking good. So what I like to do is install WordFence on all of our, all of our client websites. And then if you go underneath uh, WordFence and scan, it's going to give you anything that's going on right here so you can see right here before i update it it was uh critical that i need to update elementor so you might want to go ahead and just after you do everything you can start a new scan and make sure that you have no other uh, issues right here and then if you want you can even forward like this to the client as well so this is a really good you know system to make sure that you stay on top of and then I highly recommend that you keep underneath uh, the options right here for WordFence. Make sure that you have your email enabled so you're going to get email alerts whenever this scan uh, runs. And then if there's any issues, it will tell you when you know in your email if there's any problems. So now you can go ahead and put an X next to the WordFence scans. And then the very last item is the monthly uptime status. So let me show you the service I like to use. It's called Uptime Robot. And if you look here underneath the pricing, you can see for the free version, you're going to get 50 free monitors. So what that means is for 50 of your website clients, you can get uh, push notifications to your phone and like emails if the website goes down for any reason. So if there's any like DNS issues or anything along those lines, you're going to get an alert instantly. So what I like to do is inside the system, it automatically is going to show you a percentage of how long each uh, website was up for the month. So in most cases, it should be very, very high, 99%, or in our situation, 100%, uh, because it's extremely rare for the server that we're on to ever have any downtime. So that's a really good you know, log so the client can see that your website was up 100% of the time the whole year. So that's a really good uh, feature is making sure that you can show that to the client. And that's it for this video on how to use your new monthly website maintenance checklist. Thank you for watching.